Betsy. I suppose you've read the paper. They actually make it sound as if that crafty little girl is not guilty of Herbert's murder. Oh, they have to say that in case somebody sues them. Betsy, I've been getting a lot more out of reading about how Autumn might still lose the game. What are you talking about? Something Edward said earlier gave me the idea, so I checked. It's what? here in Father's Will. It says very clearly, anything tragic that happens to Autumn before the new will is probated, the old will comes back into effect so we could still inherit our money. How's that going to happen? I mean, she may be a conniving little thief, but Autumn's in spectacular health. Betsy, I'm not talking about pneumonia. Well, what are you talking about then? Anything can happen here. This house has already had three murders in it. Nobody would bat an eye if there was a fourth. Quentin, I can't believe what I'm hearing. I mean, I don't like Autumn any more than you do, but are you actually suggesting that somebody should murder her? I didn't say that. Would you keep your voice down? All I said was that things happen. Well, they don't happen by themselves. You're either talking about murder or you're talking about suicide. I didn't say we would do it. There's so much that's gone on in this house already. I can't believe that you're even thinking about death like that. It's just appalling. <sighs> you heard that. Look, those two are always fighting. Don't worry about it. Look, Robert, it isn't just another stupid argument. They mean it. They really want me dead. Look, all I know for sure is that they, uh, they really want your money. Yes, and killing me is the only way they're going to get it. Robert, why don't I just give them all the money? I don't care about it anyway. It hardly seems real to me. Because that's not going to tell us who killed Herbert. And it's not going to guarantee any kind of safety where you're concerned. Here, drink this. Here, come on. Don't worry, that's what they have hired help for. You know, I'm beginning to think this whole thing's all wrong. Why? What do you mean? Because it simply makes you a target for the whole greedy, miserable lot of them. Oh, but that's not your fault. Bertie's will did that all, all by itself. That's true. But if something goes wrong around here... You're going to wind up dead. No, I was... I was stupid to get you involved in No, this. you weren't, Robert. Look, I went to jail for murder. And if we don't try this, that's all I have to go back to. No, 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 no. No, it... I'll think of something else. I mean, it's really quite simple. I mean, uh, you're innocent, and all I've got to do is prove it. Your friends were right about you, you know. You're not being objective about me. How did you know they were saying that? Well, I can see it in Anna's face, for one. She thinks I'm guilty. Well, maybe. Just a little bit. Look, you're the only one that believes in me. That's we, why we are going through with this plan exactly the way you worked it out. Listen. listen. Look, Robert, your life is on the line as much as mine. Anna, the police, they all think you're crazy for doing this for me. Well, I think crazy is quite the word. What is Love you both. Okay, be good. Did you talk to the boys? Oh, yes, I talked to them. There was everything I could do to keep from bursting into tears. I mean, can you imagine how hard it is to try to explain to them that they cannot come home tomorrow for Christmas with the other kids? Must have been awful. I, I really am sorry. I should have made the call myself. Oh, for once in your life, it wasn't your fault. It's that little murderess. I'd like to murder her. I really would. They are going to come home for Christmas, aren't they? Absolutely. Nothing's going to interfere with our holiday together. Still in there with Scorpio? What on earth are they talking about? They're probably gloating about the fact that she's gotten away with murder. Well, I want her out of here. I, I want all of those Quartermains out of here. I want this house to be normal, and I can't with them here. I'm going to have a normal home, and I'm going to have a normal Christmas for the boys. I am terrified to walk out of this room. Do you know how it feels to have an entire house full of people despise you? Well, maybe that's your choice. Uh, this is your last chance, you know. Change your mind now. And we can just leave. And go where? Back to jail? No, I'll do anything but that. No, I will go through with it. It's a good plan. Albeit rather dangerous. This, this is the only way to find out who murdered Bertie. Now go. Come in. I don't care. It's my house and it's the cocktail hour. <gasps> What? Okay. Would you mind taking your sleazy romance somewhere else? How about a motel? Ah, oh, come off it, Alan. That's a little low, even for you. Well, it's no worse than finding the woman who murdered my father necking with her detective paramour in the parlor. I told you he was in this with her. I mean, how else would you get out of jail with all the evidence against her? You have a nerve showing your face around here after you've impoverished this family? Excuse Not me. Not to mention killing one of our revered members. Oh, look, come off it. 
I mean, Autumn didn't rewrite Herbert's will. She didn't have to. She just had him mesmerized. The same as she seems to have done to you, Mr. Scorpio. Do you have any idea how much pain the two of you have caused this family? Oh, I'm... I'm sure it hurts. Especially losing all the money. It oh, is don't... not just the money, Robert. It's also about justice. Or don't private investigators care about that? Yes, Monica is right. I mean, if you were half the lawman you're supposed to be, you would have arrested that creature the day that she murdered Pritchett. I mean, look at all the grief and the anguish you've caused this family, the both of you. Look, I didn't kill Pritchett, and I didn't kill Bertie. How can you say such awful things about me? No, I'm really sorry that you all feel this way. Eventually, eventually, all the truth is going to come out. I know the truth now. Enough to put her behind bars for life, that's for sure. She's a conniving, thieving little murderer. Sure, why not? What other reason would you have to kill Herbert? Like I said, we'll find out. Well, how are you going to find out when you're having an affair with the guilty woman? Look, damn it, Quentin, that's not true. Oh. We're not blind, Autumn. None of us knows the whole story. I know she's going to walk around with billions of dollars of quarter main money if she doesn't go to jail. Now, what more do I have to know? Look, I am truly sorry for all the losses that you've suffered here. Uh, billions of dollars, and you're sorry. Well, I was about to leave. I'm thinking now that it's probably a good idea that I get on with it. Yes, what a good idea. Yes, I'll go uh, along with that. Robert Scorpio, <gasps> you're doing nothing of the kind. Well, I didn't know you were here. No, I'm sure you didn't know. You wouldn't have said those awful things. Robert, you're staying for dinner. Oh, oh. oh for God's <clears throat> sake. Don't you for God's sake me, Edward. I heard all of you sharpening your knives for poor Miss Clayton as I came in. If Robert leaves, I'll have to defend her alone, and I'm not quite sure that I'm up to it. Lila, really, I don't think we can sit down at the table and have dinner with her. You really are making a very awkward situation, Mother. I know it's awkward, dear, but that's why I want Robert to stay. His presence might uh, encourage at least some semblance of decent behavior. Oh, Robert, for my sake, please. Well, Lila, you're very, very kind, and uh, yes, of course, I'll stay. Oh, good. Sake. Uh, Edward, isn't it about time for cocktails? Jennings? Yes, ma'am. Lila, sit in. Unbelievable. My own house and my own wife. Lila, mm -hmm. I think this time you are being much too kind. Uh, to the season. <laughs> Cheers, here, here. Mrs. Tatum, I'm Duke Lavery. This is Angel Moran. He works with me. Oh, please come in. Ed, come see him. Thank you. I uh, appreciate you gentlemen coming over on such short notice. Well, you said you're only in town for, for a short while. Yes, I came to pick up some things for Susie. The funeral is tomorrow. You know, we only knew Andy a short while, but, well, I happen to care for him very much. I'm very sorry. Oh, Mrs. Tatum, the box with the pots, I don't know if I can lift it. Listen, if you have something to lift, I can do it. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Lavery, how was Robin? She's doing fine, Noriko. Thank you. Of course, she misses you and Susie. We had some happy times. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Angel. Bye. You know, it's always sad when you have to close up a house that's seen so much laughter and happiness. Well, I came here to discuss some business with you. Yes, and... <clears throat> and told me before he died that uh, you were handling a trust fund he left. Yes, that's right. But there wasn't anything mentioned in the will. Well, it was something that he and I discussed, you know, after he'd written the will. Ah. I, I, know, I know the paperwork to clear up and uh, an estate takes a lot of time. And I hate to ask, No, come on, I... you should ask. It's Susie's money, after all. My husband's business isn't the best. We are always short the first of every month. And you wouldn't believe what a funeral costs. It's a couple of thousand dollars. And we didn't expect to suddenly have another child to raise. Ah, believe me, I know it's very expensive raising children. I have one of my own. But uh, I think Andy would prefer that Susie paid her own way. Well, we don't want a penny for ourselves now. We just have a you lot of You don't have to feet. explain that to me. I understand. Believe me. Thank you. Angel? Yeah, boss. Excuse me. Ah. Yeah. Do me a favor, head over to the office and then get my checkbook. It's in the top drawer of the desk. You got it. Thank you. Those, uh, the, the flowers you said, they, they came. They're, they're, 
They're beautiful. Uh, among the most beautiful we've received, the funeral home. Just can't believe all the flowers coming in for Andy from all over the world. Well, everybody who knew Andy, they liked him very much. You know, I think even his fans felt as if they knew him. Yes, I guess that's it. You know, little, our little Susie hasn't uh, taken this very well. I know. Robin's talked to her a couple of times. My wife, Anna, she's spoken to her once as well. Well, she's been cheered up by all the flowers and telegrams coming in. And Simone is there, of Simone course. Simone made it to Albany. Yes. Good. Yes, um, I wanted her to stay at our home, but uh, we have family in from everywhere, and she's just the sweetest woman. She's helped our whole family hold together. I'm sure she's comfortable in a hotel someplace there. Yes, here she is. The man she loves is gone. She's all alone. It worries me. Uh, excuse me. Of course. Thank you, Jennings. Thank you, Jennings. Yes, ma'am. So, Stella, how are operations going over at Pickle Island? Wonderful. The holiday business was just out of sight. Terrific. Maybe we can afford some TV dinners for Christmas. <laughs> oh, we'll do a little bit better than that, dear. I've ordered two turkeys. Looks as though they've arrived and they're sitting at the table. <laughs> oh, Delilah, what are you kicking me for? <laughs> for a damn good reason. <laughs> Uh, Jennings, more wine, please. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dependable as the day is long. I can't stand much more of this. Pardon? I said I can't stand what they're doing. Look at them. They're all staring at me. I don't think anyone means anything, Brian. Well, then why don't they stop it? What am I? Some sort of freak? Oh, please, dear, is something wrong? Yes. Something is wrong. Autumn, now look, just calm down. What's complaining right. about? You walked off scot-free with our money. Stop it! Stop looking at me and talking about me. I didn't kill Herbert. I loved him. Oh, oh come on. on. But one of you killed him, and you are trying to blame me for it. Oh, look, you liar. Hey, look, look, look. You're going to do no good railing at these people, all right? Now, just bring it down. Look, someone in this house is a murderer. And you expect me to calm down? Autumn, stop this, will you? You're talking nonsense. Look, maybe you're all in it together, huh? Kill Bertie and then take his money. I wouldn't put it past any one of you. No, I damn will resent that. Killers and thieves. That's what you are, the whole lot of you. Look, now just cut it out. You're as bad as the Quartermains. Just accusing everybody with that cause. Look, they have accused me of murder because he left me some money. If he left it to them, does that mean that they killed him? I don't believe this is any reason to have a nervous break. Oh, sure, right. The victim gets up and tries to defend herself, and then she is having a nervous breakdown. Listen to me. I am living in this house with people who just despise me. And you tell me I'm having a nervous all breakdown. All right, I'm sorry. I don't that I'm you. sorry, all right? Now, it's not a nervous breakdown, it's mild hysteria. Now, is that better? Hysteria, huh? Yeah. Hysteria? Well, get out of here! You heard me. Get out of this house. Mm. You've got get it. out! You've got it, sweetheart. And don't bother coming back. The place is all mine. Lila, I'm terribly sorry, but thank you for the hospitality. Get out. I'm really very sorry. I didn't mean to upset this lovely dinner. <laughs> Jennings, can I please have some salad? Yes, miss. she grows up and be like heirlooms for her. I hope this eases the pressure a little. Fifteen hundred dollars? Oh, Lord, will it? 
Oh, no, wait a minute. This is written on your personal account. No, I can't take this. I can't... Yes, you have to take it. That's the way the fund's set up. I can't write a check from the trust fund. Not at the moment. Don't you worry. First thing Monday morning, I'll go straight down to the bank and repay myself. And are you sure you won't be out anything? Not one penny. I promise you. But the fund will earn this amount of money every month. So until I can transfer the account to your bank in Albany, I'll write you a check for this amount and send it to you each month. It's so that's all. I now see why my brother trusted you. This little girl's money. Mrs. Tatum? Yes. Could you come here for a moment, please? I'll be there one moment, Noriko. It's okay, we have to go. I can find my way out. I can't. You know, I never thank you enough. Goodbye. It's my pleasure, really. You're all heart. What choice do I have? Well, you did what any decent man would do. But how long can you keep it up? Duke, you have a little girl of your own. She can use a trust fund. I know that. But for now, we have to take care of these people, okay? And now more than ever, I want to find that swine Carruthers. Okay, what do we do next to get the guy? You let every gambler and every tout on the East Coast know who Carruthers is, and I want to see him. And why? And why? Because he has that little girl's money. And I'm going to get every penny, even if it kills Carruthers. I never break a promise I make to any man, and that's my promise to Carruthers, do you understand? Brandy, miss, or perhaps a cream de mint? No, thank you, Jennings. Look at that. It's almost as if she's sorry she Jack, picked Scorpio out. No, Jennings. Looks like she's about ready to ask him back. Please, I'm sorry. I've never seen you upset about a lowest quarrel before, especially one that's cost us 50 million bucks. Yeah, I couldn't care less. I'll get it, Jennings. Hello? Might I speak to Miss Clayton, please? Oh, Scorpio, we were just talking about you. I can just imagine. Can I speak to Autumn anyway? Autumn, it's for you. It's Scorpio. Tell him I'm not here. I don't lie. You tell him you're not here. Hello. How are you doing? I mean, maybe you'd like me to come back and uh, look after you? Uh, hardly. I'm doing just fine, and I am going right upstairs after this phone call. You sure? Yes, I am sure. Good night. Lila, I just wanted to thank you for a lovely meal and for being so sweet and kind to me. You're more than welcome, my dear. I think I'll go to bed myself. Good evening, everyone. Nice, Good night, nice I'll walk you and uh, Lyle upstairs. This cold-blooded killer on the loose, I don't think it's a good idea for any of you ladies to be wandering around the house late at night by yourself. I certainly agree with you. It's not safe. Why? Whoever the killer is, two of the victims so far have been men. Well, they were taken by surprise. Are you going to come upstairs with Stella and me or not? I don't see what the hurry is, but uh, all right, all right, I'll come. Good night, Alan. Good night, Mother. Good night, Monica. Good night, Lara. Good night, Lara. Good night, Lara. Good night,
Drop it, Betsy! Easy! Let me go, you pig. Give me go! She tried to attack me. Really? She tried to take the poker away from her. She was trying to take my head off. She tried to kill me like she, she killed her. She didn't try to kill anybody, Sean. She tried to kill yeah. me. Anna. Take your hands off me. It was self-defense. It was... Uh-huh. Me. You hung yourself. We just gave you enough rope. Where is she? Autumn! Oh, how dare you trick me? Let me at her! Kappa. Let go of me. Let go of me. Stop it! Fault. You have the right to remain silent. You can give up this right. Anything you say can and may be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney and for that attorney to be present during questioning. You're not going to get no anyone. no desire and cannot afford one, an attorney will be appointed for you and no charge for the court. Do you understand the right that I've just read? He's going to be just fine. Let's not get out. Get out of here. Take her downstairs. Let me go. Let's sit down and tell everybody else what's going on. Then we can clear her. Go, clear her. She killed a Herbert. What do you think? I killed him. That crossed my mind. Well, I've never laid a hand on him. You just try and prove otherwise. Get her out of here. Let me go. You'll never get away with this. All you have is to pretend you tricked me. Let me go. Thank you for your help, not to mention your faith. Yeah, well, next time you won't have to ask twice, will you? You know, I really thought I'd be doing this one solo there for a minute. Well, we did too, for a while. Yes. It had crossed my mind that I'd been deserted, you know that? Mm. We didn't like the plan. No, we thought it was a brilliant way of getting you and Autumn killed, that's all. No, but it sure might have messed the bed. <laughs> yeah. All I can say is, thank goodness you were right. Well, being right or proving it are two different things altogether. I could never have made it work without Autumn's help here. She played her part perfectly. Talk about stage fright. I mean, you, uh, you really made that phony fight over dinner work right down to a tea. I'm very proud of you. Excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you at this late <laughs> hour, but what the hell is going on? Uh, Mr. Scorpio's uh, Christmas party got a little out of hand, Jennings. That's all. Well, all the other help, they're terrified. Jennings. I will talk to them personally. Listen, can you... Yeah, no, yeah we will. Week. Can't wait to see the look on their faces. I'll be back in a few minutes. What's happened? Have you seen my wife? What is in here? Betsy! What's happened? There's been a terrible mistake. Look! What in the world did... You removed those disgusting bracelets from my wife's wrist this minute. I can't do that, Mr. Quartermaster. Betsy, what is going on here? I don't know. They're throwing accusations at me. I... Your wife is under arrest for the attempted murder of Autumn Clayton and for the murder of Herbert Quartermain. That is ridiculous! That is the most preposterous notion I have ever heard! Time will tell. May I have a moment with my husband, please? Alone? You think I'm going to try and escape? How could I... Where could I go like this? Okay, but I'll be right in the entry. Thank you. Betsy, what has happened? Shh, keep your voice down. Thank you, sir. Uh, Quentin. What? I love you. Do you know how much I love you? Darling, of course, but what has that got to do with this? That's why I did it. Why, you did what? I tried to kill Autumn. You, you, shh. I had to. It's what you wanted. You talked about getting rid of her, remember? Betsy! Well, that was just talk. I had no intention of doing... Yeah, do but darling, your gambling debts are real. If you don't get your father's money, you'll be ruined. Uh, That's why I had to try and dispose of her. For you. I love you so much, I'd even go to jail for you. Betsy, no, 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 no. We can't have that. Oh, and we can't let this go to court either. Unless you want the world to know about your gambling debts. <laughs> when you've got to do something, think well, of something. Yes, of course. Th this is entrapment. That's what this is. Right. And I know we can get you off this attempted yes. murder charge. Perfect. Uh, but what about my father's murder? Why are they accusing you of I that? I don't know. I don't know. I, I loved Herbert like he was my own daddy. I could never uh, think of killing Herbert. Then why are they charging you with his murder? I don't know. Scorpio. It's Scorpio. He's trying to pin it on me to free his beloved Autumn. Yes, she's the real murderer. That must be what it is. Well, he's not going to yes. get away with that. You are not going to go to jail. If you go to jail, we, we, we're going to lose everything. Did you get the help settled down? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all back in their rooms and reasonably quiet. Well, I'm glad someone is. Would you please tell me what's going on here? In due time. Why don't you take him downstairs and I'll join you shortly. Will do. Doctor, shall we? Let me explain a few things. But, but I don't know. No, 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 don't worry about it. Just let me... to worry about now. It's all over. Hmm? I'm not thinking of myself. You could have been killed. Could have doesn't count. Well, what if Betsy hadn't been fooled? What if she'd surprise you? You know, one good swing with that poker and you would have been killed. Yeah, but it didn't happen. I'm here. It's all over. There's nothing more to think or worry about now. Hmm? Why are you doing all this for me? I've given you nothing but trouble since the day I walked in your door. And what do you do? You've stood up for me when no one else would. You've worked day and night to prove me innocent. And then you've saved my life. Why? It's my job. I know you better than that. All right. You're a very young, frightened, vulnerable young girl. Now, why don't you get dressed and join the others in the living room for the big party, huh? What's up? Don't you want to face them? I'm terrified to face Betsy and the others. They'll never believe me. Yeah, but I believe you. And that's all that matters. They will soon enough. There's nothing to be ashamed of. If anything, they're the ones that need to be ashamed to face you. Sean. Is Robert all right? He's fine. He asked me to call you, Jack. How'd it go? Uh, he pulled off his plan without a hitch. So who's the real killer? We guess. Miss Betsy. I see no reason at all to wake mother and father, are you? No, we can fill them in in the morning. I just wonder what Scorpio's got up his sleeve. I guess we'll know soon enough. Yeah. Oh. I don't believe it. I don't either. Looks like Betsy did what we all wanted to do. It's a shame it backfired. We'd be $50 million richer. Shh. You mean, sure, I'm only stating the facts outright where we all fell. You state those facts outright to the police so we could be in jail. Come on, this should be interesting. No, Jake, why don't you talk to him in the morning? He's got his hands full right now. Yeah. We'll do, buddy. <clears throat> Bye. Jake sends his congratulations. Well, we could have done it without him. How do you want to play this? I really don't know. I've been making love as I go along so far. Oh, you're on a roll, so just keep winging it. Okay, let's just jump in and see what happens. All right. Where are uh, Quentin and Lewis? In the den. Mr. Quartermain grabbed the chief the minute he got here. No doubt to comment on my brilliant detective work. Those weren't exactly his words. As a matter of fact, I can't repeat what he said in polite company, but you can bet Chief Lewis is getting an earful. So Quentin's not too happy, huh? Enraged is more like it. I bet he got rescuing. Daniel, will you stay yeah, here you with bet. the warden? Thank you. Sounds like a dangerous mission, old buddy. You want some backup? No, I wasn't bad to volunteer you. No, no problem. Just as long as you go first. and trapped my wife. You try to find a court anywhere in this country that doesn't agree with me. Well, fortunately, that's not my job. There he is. Arrest him. For what? He's as guilty as my wife is. Listen, Quentin, just listen to me, will you? What are you going to do, accuse me of murder next? Now, look, please, let's not go off half-cocked here. Why not? He certainly has. Look, I know what I'm doing. Oh, yes, you do. You're trying to railroad an innocent woman to save a guilty one. What? How dare you accuse my wife of murdering my father? I have my reasons. Oh, of course, your reasons foremost among them being you're desperate to keep your girlfriend out of jail. Look, I realize what a shock this must be to you. Is Autumn really that good? Let's leave her out of this. <sighs> she means so much to you that you're going to try to frame my wife? I don't frame people, Quartermain, and I don't point fingers at them idly either. 
I'm accusing your wife because I happen to think she's guilty. Well, then prove it. I intend to. How? How are you going to prove it? You don't have a shred of evidence. You think Betsy's going to confess to a murder that she didn't commit? You are twisting in the wind, Scorpio. Well, we'll see. Oh, yes, we will see. And you think that's where it's going to end, do you? Well, it won't. When they laugh you out of court, I am going to slap a summons on you. I'm going to get a lawsuit against you and your partner and your accomplices and the entire Port Charles Police Department. So many lawsuits, your, your heads are going to swim. I'm going to have your detective's license revoked, and then you see if you or your partner can ever investigate a case anywhere, anytime, as long as you live. That's your prerogative. You're going to wish you never heard of my father. I wished I'd never heard of your whole crummy family. Well, you haven't heard of anything yet. <laughs> I would say the Quartermain means business. Seems that way. Hope you've got a hole card. It better be an ace. If no one's going to check your hand, I will. Let me see your cards. Nothing. Got a hunch? Oh, yeah, well, I think that's not going to be enough to buy chips in this game. I only need one, and the hunch involves Bertie. I mean, there's no... There's no doubt about Betsy trying to pulverize Autumn. Good luck, old buddy. I know I'm right. I just have to prove it, that's all. Literature can teach us many, many things. But problems arise when you start to confuse fact with fiction. Bebbit identified very strongly with the judge, you know, and then there were none. I mean, they were both very determined people. They were both, uh... Well, they both set out to punish people who'd betrayed them and were ungrateful. Both, both dared to put themselves in a position of ultimate power. And both dared to be God. Unfortunately for poor Herbert, it all kind of backfired. Well, you get on with it. He tested you all. Not surprisingly, most of you flunked. That's the reason he set out to destroy you and your father. Because we flunked a test we didn't even know we were taking? Well, pop quizzes can be murder, quite literally. Well, that doesn't explain why my father... Uh, turned on us. Well, I guess he must have decided you were both just too greedy. Now, that's ridiculous. Now, listen, I've had enough of this dime store psychoanalysis. I am endeavoring to establish motive here. Oh, you don't have any case, Scorpio. Now, why don't you just admit it? You're shooting in the dark. Look, if you'll just all bear with me, please. Oh, my goodness. Are you going to stand here and spout some more nonsense? Do you think some miracle will drop into your lap? Maybe one of us will confess out of sheer boredom. <laughs> will you show us some hard evidence? I know I'm right. If if, if I can... If I could just... Admit it! You have nothing to hold my wife on! I guess when you get right down to it, you could be right. I knew it! <laughs> I demand that you release her this minute. Yes. Give me the keys of the cuffs. Don't you worry, darling. Oh, Everything's going to be oh, just fine. Oh, and we brilliant. will demand a public so apology. Brilliant. What are you two kids away have from here? Do you normally wear men's cologne? Where did those come from? Surprise, wait, 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 surprise. Wait, those are mine. Well, even a bigger surprise, surprise. Betsy, what were you doing with, with those in I, your pocket? Now, there's a know. billion dollar question, isn't it? I, I don't understand. You I, care to enlighten your husband? I don't remember. I, 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 somebody planted them there. Oh, he planted them there. Oh, come on now, Betsy. Trip. They couldn't have just walked off the dresser. You can do better than that, can't you? Betsy, what were you doing with my cologne and my cufflink and my hairbrush? I don't remember. Maybe I borrowed your hairbrush. You know I like to look nice with you, so maybe I... No, I think that you intended to pin Autumn's murder on your husband. You, no. What? I mean, isn't that what the story is here? I mean, it's consistent with your M.O. You tried to pin Herbert's murder on Autumn. No, you're trying to frame me. Oh, it was brilliant, though. I mean, what a, what a brilliant plan you set up here. You must have read hundreds and hundreds of mystery novels. You picked up every trick in the book. I mean, that, that bit about the hair, the way you took the hairs out of... Autumn's hairbrush and then wrapped him around Herbert's fingers. Now, that was a cute idea. I mean, a professional hitman couldn't have set up evidence any better than that. It was so good, in fact, you decided to go back for a repeat performance with your husband. 
That's not true, I dare you. See, but the thing is, it backfired a little bit and you overdid it. It worked so well, you decided to try the whole thing out on hubby here, didn't you? No, no, no. Entwine twine a bit of his hair around that. Autumn's fingers and then sprinkle a bit of the old Odie de Quentin on the body and then just throw this, this cuffling into the bloodied sheets. He's making it yes, up. You, Don't believe You him. can't have Don't done listen. this. You know why? Aren't you interested why? Why? Because she wanted you to take the rap for everything, leaving her to inherit the whole lot. No. I mean, simple subtraction. Herbert's dead, Autumn's blamed. Autumn's killed, you go to jail, and everything reverts back to the old will, leaving your grieving wife a billion bucks to console herself it's with. lies. Don't listen, Quentin. It's Betsy. Money, 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 money was the motive for all of the crimes, wasn't it, Betsy? Solely. You had it all worked out except one little thing. And that was how you were going to spend the inheritance. Well, you won't have to worry about that, because you're going to spend the rest of your life in the slammer. No! No, I can't go to jail. No, I keep quitting. I did it for you. I did it for the family. Everybody wanted him dead. That's why I killed Herbert. Betsy! I don't know what to say, Betsy. I had no idea that you hated me so much. Oh, darling, I could never hate you, but you were an idiot to gamble away our fortunes. We could have been billionaires. Oh, darling, I knew you were a fool when I married you, but I just, I never dreamed you'd be this pathetic. That's why Herbert found out about your gambling, about your debts. He disinherited you. That's the reason. Forcing you to take action. Forcing is right. Do you think I enjoyed killing Herbert? It was awful. I just couldn't sit back and let her fortune slip through my fingers. So, you devised a plan, huh? Yes. Wasn't bad either, was it? Oh, come on, Betsy. It was absolutely brilliant. I mean, do you realize <laughs> you came so close to pulling off the perfect crime? <laughs> come on, tell us. How'd you do it, huh? Well, it was easy. Once I found out that Herbert wasn't dead, it just... All sort of fell into place like it was meant to be. Tell me, um, what clued you into that particular fact, hmm? Well, I first realized something strange was going on when I caught Quentin rifling through Herbert's room, remember? I came in, and I asked him what he was doing, and he said he was looking for something valuable because he needed money. Well, I accused him of gambling because that's Quentin's little vice. It's always been. Well, he denied it at first, but then he finally admitted that, yes, he needed money in a hurry because all his bookies were after him. Well, I told him we were going to have tons of money soon. But he said that wouldn't be soon enough, that probate just takes too much time and that Herbert should have died sooner. But even though I didn't stop and deal with it at the time, I saw on the wall the picture, some movement, as it closed. Did, uh, did Quentin also see it? Huh? Oh, no, Quentin didn't notice anything. But I became immediately suspicious. And the next morning, I spotted Autumn sneaking into Herbert's bedroom. I followed her. When I got in the bedroom, I... Nobody was there. I knew I'd seen her enter the room, but she... I didn't know what had happened to her. Then I heard voices. I listened. I don't give a damn what Betsy thinks about me, but Herbert is quite another matter. Talking to Autumn. I was shocked. He was still alive. Herbert was telling Autumn how he didn't believe that we had all turned against his memory. How Quentin especially had turned against him. Well, I just couldn't believe the old coot was still alive. I ducked out before Herbert or Autumn could see me. And then later that day, I followed Autumn again. This time I knew exactly what she was up to. I went to the wall and listened. Herbert was telling Autumn how he planned to upset everybody by making an appearance at dinner. It was then that I realized that not only did Herbert plan to stun everybody by his resurrection from the dead, he had made a new will. And you had to make sure that that never happened, right? Yes. 
Our fortune was at stake. So, you made your move, hmm? Yes. That night I, I sneaked into Herbert's private room. Yeah. He knew exactly what I was I up to. You... Well, what do you he was want? Terrified. Now get out of here. He recoiled in what horror as do? I very calmly picked oh, no, up the water no, and smashed it over his head. And then, with my gloved hands, I pressed around his neck and kept pressing until he stopped moving. And when you were sure he was dead, that's when you wrap the hair around Herbert's fingers, isn't it? Isn't that the way it worked? Hmm? I just don't understand why she wanted to kill Herbert in the first place. Yeah, she wouldn't have inherited anything. Well, you see, that was only part of the plan. Betsy was going to establish that you were having an affair with Autumn. Uh, uh, what? That's where the cologne, the cufflink came in. The police would automatically assume that... Uh, Autumn had decided not to divvy up her inheritance with you. You fought. She was killed. The best thing you could hope for would be to rot away in prison for the rest of your life. Well, what was the worst? Well, if in some way you managed to beat the rap and go free, well, Betty Boop here would have killed you anyway. Right? I, I don't believe it. Dear God. Who said money isn't everything? I'll take her in personally. It's all Scorpio, Scorpio. I don't know how you did it. I'm not too sure myself. I'm proud of yourself, my chip. I did it for you, Quentin. You ought to thank me. I mean, what's the problem? I did it for the family. I thought you said you didn't have any evidence against Betsy. I didn't. You mean this was all improvised? Well, I was blind what I said to my pants for most of it, and the only thing I had was her attempt on Autumn here. You took one out of a risk. Yeah, well, I figured that sooner or later something would break. I just hoped that when it happened, it was going to be enough. I mean, I couldn't see an innocent girl go to prison. Headquarters promised the mystery witness will be here first thing in the morning. Mystery witness? I thought now that you've unmasked Betsy, the case is closed. Yes. Uh, listen, no, step back into the living room. I just want to have a quick word with everyone. There seems to be some misunderstanding that this case is over. What else is there? Well, you see, Herbert's murder was only the worst crime committed. One or more people helped conspire to fake his first death. I, uh... Refuse to answer that on the grounds that it might incriminate me. I didn't ask, but you can be sure I will. You'll have every chance to incriminate yourself and anybody else you wish tomorrow. What's tomorrow? Show and tell. I want to question everybody in far greater detail. I'm hoping that my mystery witness will jog a few memories. Have another witness? You find out at nine o'clock sharp tomorrow morning. Please, don't make me come looking for anyone. Sleep well. I just can't oh. believe that we've got another witness. Nothing would surprise me at this point. I mean, Herbert's a pain it's in the neck even after me, he's dead. It? I'm afraid not. By your own admission, you conspired with Herbert 
You aided and abetted the criminal. You hampered a murder investigation. Which means what exactly? Well, you'll have to undergo more questioning before you're through. Is that all? I could still go back to jail, couldn't I? Autumn, I can't offer any guarantees. As usual, your best defense is the truth. I just hope it's enough. Looks like you're not going to spend another Christmas in this crazy house. You know, to tell you the truth, I'll miss you. Uh, you've been a model patient. <laughs> you're probably, probably pretty excited about getting out, huh? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Do you have people to go to? A woman? Oh, whoever it is, won't she be surprised to find you in a Christmas stocking? You look there already. No, I didn't look under these cushions. Find it? Ah, I found this, though. 17 cents and thank you. a pencil. Oh, you. Huh, thank you. You sure you didn't leave it on the dresser? I'm positive I didn't leave it on the dresser. Maybe I should search you for it. I don't have it. Hmm, too bad. Hmm. I'll get lipstick on you. Look, hmm. I would love to stay and help you, but I have to get over to the court room. It's Robert's roughly my case today. I'll find it on my own, thank you. Can I make a suggestion? What? Well, you just calm down a bit and slow down. You'll find it. I don't have time. I've got to get done time. This early? Yeah, I'm going to do some Christmas shopping. There's only one, two, three days left. <laughs> Shop's going to be open this time in the morning. Oh, yeah, then I want to be first in line for when they open. We don't need any more presents. And we certainly don't need to spend any more money, OK? Yeah, well, I want to get little things, though. Stocking jammers. You know, to put inside the seat. Stocking fillers. Here. What's going on? Aha! Got it. Yeah, good. Okay. I asked you a question. What's going on? I'm going to be late. I'll see you later. No. No. You're not leaving here until you tell me what's happening. Mm. I want to know. Mm. Oh, good morning, Jennings. Well, I'm not so sure about that, Mr. Scorpio. Too bad. Too bad. What's that? Well, ordinarily, I would be extending season's greetings, but so far, it has not been a very merry Christmas in this house, I'm afraid. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. Perhaps Santa will yet stop off before the year's out. Oh, I thought I heard your voice. Hey, sweetheart. You uh, ready for a spot of Q&A? I dread it. What if the district attorney doesn't believe me? Well, really, all you've got to do is convince him that you weren't part of Herbert's little plot. But what if I can't do it? You have to. Prison is no place to spend Christmas. Here we are gathered once again to witness the brilliance of the poor Charles police. It's bad enough that we're poor again. Why put us through another interrogation? Oh, poor Quentin. He's all alone now. I feel sorry for him. No, don't waste any sympathy on him. That man's father died twice, and poor Quentin never shed a single tear. Oh, hail, hail, the gang's all here. Why, Donnelly? Because the district attorney said that everybody involved with the case had to be here, and uh, he did work for Herbert, or have you forgotten that? I couldn't figure anything Donnelly's done. Monica, Alan. Hello, Sean. Edward. Stella? Might I get... Uh... One little smile from one of the members of the Quartermain family. Hmm? Of course, dear boy. <laughs> That's very brave of you, Lila. I'm uh, sorry for all the... Uh... Unpleasantness. Right. You're such a pity. Tell me, Sean, what happens next? The DA is going to ask some questions. Do me a fight. Anything. Well, Autumn's uh, pretty upset. Uh, she... well, I don't blame her. Well, I was wondering if maybe you could convey some of that sparkling encouragement of yours. Hmm? I'll give it my best shot. Thank you. Well, good morning, all. May I have a brief word with you? Sure. 
Oh, but Robert, you will come back, won't you? Oh, Lila, you can depend on us. Lila seems to think this is a party. Yes, but you and I both know different. Now, the mm. DA, he's going to be a lot tougher than Lewis ever was. Can you blame him? Look at the number of crimes committed in this household. I'm no lawyer, <laughs> Robert, but I can count the same way he can. We've got uh, conspiracy to fraud people. We've got false statements to the police. We have intended murders, and we have false reporting of deaths. I mean, yeah, somebody won't stop there either. Well, this guy is is thinking he's going to get the run around, so he's going to be out for blood. I just hope it's not going to be autumn's. Uh, Sean Donnelly, he's been working on the case with me. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Is everyone here? I believe so. Why don't you move in? Ah, uh, the young lady over there is uh, Alicia Jones. She's one of my associates. Anna Devane, my partner, will be here uh, later on. And I'm hoping Jake Meyer, depending on whether we can get a continuance on this case he's working on. Mm. We can get started then. I really appreciate the help you've given us. We're that much closer to Herbert Quartermain's murderer. Mm. I won't be satisfied, though, until I nail his accomplices. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Robert. Oh, Miss Lombardi. Good to see you. Glad you came for me. They seem very pleased with themselves. Well, I sure hope there's a good reason for that. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. I just got back from the airport where I picked up a surprise witness. Check out the reactions. Right. Sam, bring the witness, please. I wonder who that could be. I can't imagine. My oh, God. my God, Dottie. It can't be, she's dead. Don't say anything. Don't say a word. I thought you'd left. Oh, no, I'm going to come downtown with you. Oh, no, you can't do that. I don't want you to see if I'm going to buy you. Okay? I'm not going downtown. I'm going to catch the shuttle and go to New York. Christmas shopping in New hmm? York? Mm -hmm. just, just some business I have to attend to. What business? I'm going to miss the plane. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Come on. You worried about something? It... The club, isn't it? No. Yeah, well, then what? You can tell me. I know what you're like. It's nothing important. Then why are you going to New York? Well, if I can get to New York, well, then I can work it all out. You should let me help. Come on, you are helping just by caring so much. You're not in any kind of trouble, are you? I don't look as if I'm in any kind of trouble. I've got to catch the plane, though. And I'll tell you all about it tonight. Okay. Give us a kiss. Bye. Promise. Mm -hmm. See you later. Sit down, Doctor. We don't need any more trouble than we already have. You get a chance to say what's on your mind. I have nothing to say to you, and neither has she. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the district attorney has very kindly allowed me the dubious honor of addressing you yet again. Yes, I can see how delighted you all are. Anyway, before we get into this, I'd like to point out one thing, that I intend to get to the truth here, and I'm not going to settle for anything less. And I'm sure the DA won't either. Before we leave here today, we're going to go through all the events that happened in this house prior to Herbert's murder. And we're going to establish who was responsible for what. Why don't we start with you? I mean, it's not very often we get a chance to talk to someone who's risen from the dead. Why don't you uh, have a seat and tell us all about your journey to the far side. And I warn you, stick to the truth because I know most of the facts anyway. He's only bluffing, Dottie. He doesn't know anything. Don't you believe it? I mean, look, just own up. This whole thing was your idea anyway, wasn't it? No! Oh, come on. Don't be so modest. I mean, it was very clever. I mean, not many people get a chance to engineer their own death and then come to life again with a pocket full of cash on the beaches of Rio, huh? But I didn't do that. That's a lie. I told you not to say anything. He... He's only trying to upset you. Dorothy, why don't you level with Robert? That way he'll stop badgering you. Now, if you don't, there just isn't going to be any Brazilian nightlife for you anymore. 
You're going to spend your days and nights looking at the inside of a prison. And instead of sandy beaches, you'll spend the rest of your life sitting in a solitary jail cell. You know what a solitary jail cell is like? Stop it! Prison? That isn't the way... What happened when you first died? Yes, Dorothy, be kind to yourself. Just tell him. It was all Herbert's idea. It, it was like a oh, game. I prepared to die. We met what under the clock, Herbert, Dr. Like Wallace and I. Room. Don't worry, Doctor. We were very quiet. We, we didn't want to wake anyone. Dr. Wallace was very nervous. Herbert was, was so bright and gay, like a little boy. He even brought a bottle of ketchup. He wanted to make it look real. He, he smeared it on my robe so it would look like blood. We laughed. He had two murder weapons. One was fake, of course. The, the other one was the one he intended to hide. It was, it was getting late, so... We knew what we had to do. Herbert had given us all directions beforehand. They put me in my place behind the clock. Wallace left, and then Herbert arranged the chimes. I stayed behind the clock until I heard the clock chime. Then I slid out. I heard Stella call. No, no! I didn't do anything! I don't know what they were doing. Well, I didn't even hear them. I just heard the clock chime. I just came down for a glass of warm oh, milk. No, I wasn't that. any part of their plan. Well, you were, but you just weren't aware of it. Herbert actually had a style of role for you. You were going to find the body. I couldn't sleep. How many times did that clock chime? I don't know. What time is it anyway? Well, my watch says uh, 1 o'clock. Let's see what it says. Daddy! Daddy! I, um, believe you can recall what happened next. We came in and saw the body. Which neither you nor Monica examined. Uh, excuse me. No, I wasn't even here. I was in the Biscayne Islands. Okay. Do you recall uh, who was present there? Uh, there was uh, Quinton and Betsy and Herbert and Autumn. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Then what happened? Well, Dr. Wallace said she was dead. Then? I called the police. Why don't, uh... Why don't you tell us what happened next, hmm? Oh, I will. Everybody left except Wallace and Herbert. Herbert waited until he was sure they'd all gone back to their rooms, and then he tiptoed back to me, and I rose from the dead. He was so pleased. He, he was sure we'd fooled them. Dr. Wallace had agreed. Herbert struck him on the head and knocked him unconscious. Then he took my hand, and we went off to the secret room. Now we must steal the body. That's how he made you all think afterwards when you came back downstairs that someone had stolen my body. It's very good, Dorothy. Look at the The truth always comes out. That's why you should never be afraid of it. The man's a potential killer. That's not a valid assumption. Look at his history. It's been years since he heard those episodes, and there's nothing in his recent behavior that warrants keeping him here. Dr. Lamb, in your opinion, the patient should be released? Absolutely. I respect your opinion, but it worries me. We could be releasing a killer. That's highly unlikely. He can live his own life and contribute to society like any of us, if he keeps his medication. That's a very big if. He's keenly intelligent. He knows what he wants. If anyone understands the need for a regular regime, he does. Are you sure about that? I suggest we talk to the patient. Yes, we might as well. We're not getting anywhere this way. Please come in. <clears throat> I know you've been waiting for us, and thank you for your patience. We have reviewed your request for release, and frankly, we are concerned. At the moment, we do not have a definite yes or no. I have told my colleagues that you and I have talked. Yes. And that you're completely aware of the necessity of that medication. Tell me, if we were to 
decide against you, how would you feel? I'm disappointed. I feel I'm ready to go. However, if you don't, I'd understand. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Will you wait outside, please? Again, thank you. And that is your killer? I don't know. You've been treating him. Let's look at his file again. You know, you took that pretty good. Because I don't think I'd have handled it as well. 